We could definitely use Desmos on this question, but I don't think it's the most efficient way to do it. I'll show you it at the end and, and kind of why it makes me a little bit nervous. But here, if you recognize the topic, this is really simple, right? So they're asking about the number of solutions and there's two things that can happen on the SAT. Either they ask for the number of solutions when we have a quadratic equation, in which case we're maybe using things like the discriminant or thinking about the vertex. Uh, but if it's lines, it's way simpler. And I know that these are lines because there's no exponents at all. Now they don't quite look like lines. First of all, it's one equation and not two equations, but we can easily kind of think of them as two separate lines. And that's what I would do. I basically split it here. And then I don't need to do this. I would do this in my head, but still the first one, I would just, you know, we were distributing both, right? So that's 12 X minus 36 Y equals, I'll put that in for symmetry and then negative three X minus 36. So when we have these y equals mx plus b equations, it's very obvious to me that this is just a, a normal set of lines. They have exactly one solution. And the reason is I'm looking at the slopes. Now, if the slopes are different, that's it. You're done. The lines can only intersect once or, you know, they basically b is never going to be an answer when we have lines. It could be an answer when we have quadratics, but never a case with lines. They can intersect once, which is exactly what's happening. If they have zero solutions, that's going to be because the lines are parallel, which means that they're going to have the same slope and different y-intercepts. So these would have the same y-intercept, but that has nothing to do with it, right? That doesn't impact it. That means they intersect maybe at that point, but that that's it. So um, that's zero solutions, infinitely many solutions is going to be the exact same equation. So if I distributed these things out and I ended up with 12x minus 36 twice, then infinitely many solutions. So those are going to have the same equation, meaning the same slope and the same y-intercept. Now that kind of gets to why I don't love doing this on the Desmos here, because you got to, first of all, you got to type it in. So I've already done that. So we don't have to watch me do that, but we do see a, a vertical line. Now that is not like a Y equals MX plus B line. Basically what it's doing is it's providing the solution. So we see it and because it's lines, I know that there can't be any others, but if it were like a quadratic, then it's a little harder because maybe there's a second solution and it's off screen, right? So we have to zoom around and kind of look for it. Um, so that, that's one way to do it. You're going to get these vertical lines and count the lines and, and that's going to give you the number of solutions. But if there were no solutions or if there were infinitely many solutions, it would just give you a blank graph. So you have to scroll around for a while, maybe looking for that one line and, and eventually you have to decide that it doesn't exist. But you still wouldn't know whether it's zero or infinitely many. Neither is going to appear. So one way to counteract that is you could always split them like I did and then just have two equations and you'll basically just have two lines and then you can just kind of see for yourself what happens, right? So these intersect, they intersect exactly where I thought at the y-intercept of negative 36. And so this is another way for me to confirm what I thought. But like I said, I, I would not be using Desmos here at all. Um, I just think it's, it, it's, it just takes too much effort, right? If I understand the rules of how the number of solutions are affected by linear equations, I'm just going to use those rules. It's very easy to distribute. But if you have no idea what's going on, then yeah, you can still get this right by going to Desmos. And in this case, you're lucky because no matter what you put in, you're going to see that, that line. You're going to see that intersection. And so you'll be able to notice. But if it were C or D, you've got a problem. Then it's going to be harder and you're going to need some extra information. So if you haven't already, watch my lesson on the number of solutions when there are no x squareds. That's going to tell you everything you need.